there lovelies it's Gretchen welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here I am trying something different not just in my backdrop or anything like that just trying something different something that I have been wanting to do for years and I honestly think getting away from it is what led me to what I'm gonna talk about today I am in my reading era again I'm in my bookish era again I am on a roll with reading. I'm so excited about it. I'll get into it, but I, I have a background with reading and I finally have found myself out of a reading slump that I have been in for pretty much like five years. And so I thought today I would come to you all relaxed, chilled out. Okay, I can't really relax in this position, but that's fine. I thought I'd come to y'all today in case any of you all are experiencing a read in slump and you're like, I don't know how to get out of this. I really wanna read again, but I can't. I thought I would come to you all with some things that I have found have helped me get out of my read in slump. Also be on the lookout for more bookish related content on here. I've been kind of tossing some in there already with my vlogs, but I really want to do more booktube stuff. Will my entire channel be dedicated to it? Probably not. I'll probably still stick with like vlogs and lifestyle content and all that. Like I don't see too much changing with the channel, but I do see more book related content. So if you're into that, well, hopefully you like it. I'm already rambling. Can y'all tell I haven't done like a little sit down video in a while? I'm rambling at this point. Anyway, let's just get into this. A little bit of background about me for those that don't know. I used to be an avid reader, like so much so that I had a book blog dedicated to it. Like I was reading that much. I love doing a book blog. I don't think I could do a book blog now because of the upkeep with a blog which is why I like video format better. I like vlogs as opposed to blogs. So I don't think I could do a blog now, though I do miss that one. I spent a lot of time on it, but I read so much that I, my, my education was focused on reading. My undergraduate degree was in English and secondary education so I could teach it. My master's degree is in library and information science so I could be around books all the time. And then those things didn't really work out for me. I was a school librarian for three years, two years at a high school level, one year at a middle school level, and then I was like, K through 12, not for me. Do I miss being in a library? Yes. Would I go back to a library? Probably depends on the setting, but I do miss the whole feeling that I used to get from reading, which is why I'm trying to like gain control of it again. So like I mentioned, I was in a reading slump for like five years, potentially longer, but I'd read like a book here, one there, but just never a whole lot, not like I used to. And so it was Christmas of 2022 where I got a Kindle and even when I got a Kindle then, I only read like four books in 2023, which, okay, fine. That was better than what I had been doing up until that point, but still four books, it's like one a season. But at the end of 2023, I all of a sudden just like got it in my head. I was like, okay, I want to read again. I need to find something fluffy. And that's what pulled me back in was like nothing intellectually stimulated, nothing that was gonna make me be like, what the? Did I just read? I needed something cute, light, and fluffy. And that's what the book I found provided me. So I credit my getting out of a book slump to Delilah Green Doesn't Care. Super cute, sapphic romance novel. Absolutely adored it. So much so that I read the rest in the series. So Delilah Green Doesn't Care is the first one. The second one is Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail. And then the third one is Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. I fell in love with those books so much. I fell in love with the characters, fell in love with the story. It was just so cute, so light, so fluffy. Some spice. Actually, there wasn't just some spice. It was pretty spicy. It was pretty spicy. And I have learned that I enjoy that. So it wasn't until those books when all of a sudden I was just like, oh my gosh, I have missed this feeling of reading. So, I am officially, at least I feel like I am, I'm officially out of my reading slump. So for those of you who may be feeling a reading slump and you're like, I just wanna get back into reading so bad, but I have no idea how I can do it. I've tried everything and just like nothing seems to pull me out of this slump. I got you, I think, I hope. I just thought I'd share with you all what has helped me come out of my five plus year read and slump. So the first thing that I found particularly helpful was to surround myself with other readers, not necessarily avid readers. No, no, no. These are not people who are reading like five to eight 
10 books a week. These are like the everyday person who reads like one or two in a week's time. I surrounded myself with avid readers, those who enjoyed reading just when they had the time. Uh, the first person being my husband. First of all, he's the one that got me my Kindle at Christmas of 2022. Second of all, he got a Kindle and he has just been reading every single day, even if it's for like 10 minutes, even if it's just a chapter in a book. He has been reading every single day consistently and I saw that and I picked up on it and I'm like, you know what? I can do that. I can read a chapter a day. I've been doing a whole lot more than that recently. Likewise, I started talking about reading over on Twitch during my live streams and there's a lot of readers in Twitch chat. So within our community, we got a lot of readers and we just all kind of connected over our love of reading, but also finding that there was no way we could be reading five plus books in a week. I still don't know how people do that. So just surrounding yourself with other readers, others who like to read, others who enjoy books, stories, doesn't matter like the genre, y'all could like different genres because my husband and I definitely like different genres, but it's just finding that connection with others who also enjoy it. I also ended up watching a lot of bookish content creators. So like on YouTube, on TikTok, those were like the two big ones, but also on Instagram, you see some things over there and just like watching their content really just pulled me back in to wanting to read again. So then on top of that, if you're like, well, I don't really know anyone. We got you, we've got you. And this is not sponsored, but hi Fable. How you doing? But I actually went on ahead and set up a book club over on Fable after being given like the, the nudge by community members. And uh, one of them gave us a grand book club name called Go Read a Damn Book. Shout out to Ayla. So if you wanna join it, uh, we do have a book club set up over on Fable. We have not started officially yet. We just have it set up. So if you would like to join it, so that you can be prepared when a book is set up. The hope is that March will be our setup. It's just gonna be one book. We're not gonna sit here and be like, oh my God, we're gonna read a book a week, everyone, let's go. No, it's gonna be one book that you read over the course of a month. What is that book? We don't know yet. We're gonna pick it, don't worry, it's coming. But if you are interested, the link is in the description. I believe you can only access it by app. I don't think there's a desktop version for it, so just, pull it up on your smartphone, Fable, and uh, you can join it there. Currently the club is set to private until I get like everything flushed out. So I don't think you can search it right now. So you have to go through the link, but we'll get to a point, we'll get to a point. But just if you would like to surround yourself with other bookish people that are part of our community, there's an option. I already kind of mentioned this, but this is something that I've had to like get over, get past, but realize you don't have to read like these intellectually stimulating books all the time. Like, yes, they're fine and everything like that, like the classics and all of that, but you don't have to read it. All books count. I know some people will look down on like romance novels that are fluffy and have spice and they're smut and everything like that. A book is a book. If you enjoy it, that's what matters. So don't feel like you have to be reading these intellectually stimulating books all the time for it to count. And, and I think there's something to be said there, I know for me specifically, because I got a degree in English, there's like some weird I don't, expectation where it's like, ah, you got an English degree. You must be a scholar. You must be well-rounded, well-read. Look, let me tell you, some of my favorite stuff involves all the smuttiest smut, like five out of five chili peppers. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So just like getting past that. That may not be a thing for everyone, but that was definitely a thing for me, feeling like I had to be reading these like five-star books all the time that were thought-provoking, blah, 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 blah. A book is a book. Read what you enjoy, read what you like. Another thing that I have found has helped me is how I consume books. Like others, I absolutely enjoy a physical book. There is just nothing like a physical book. Having a physical book in your hands, there is nothing like it. There's not, nothing. It smells so good, there's nothing like it. However, I have found that I read significantly faster and am able to keep my focus longer when I read on my Kindle. Also, peep how cute my Kindle is now. Look at the stickers, look at the little pop socket, so cute. I can read so much faster on my Kindle and I find myself focusing longer on a book 
when I'm reading with my Kindle. Same thing for audiobooks. Like I just said, all books are books. I, I don't care if it's thought provoking, intellectually stimulating, or a bunch of fairy smut. All books are books. And that goes for ebooks as well as audiobooks. And let me tell you, audiobooks, now I see why people get through numerous books in a week. You put that stuff on like a faster speed, you are blowing through those books. Unless you have a graphic audio audiobook. I don't recommend speeding through those because they are just it's like a little movie. I will say specifically for audiobooks, two things to keep in mind. One, yes, you want to read some reviews, non-spoilery reviews about the book itself, but also read reviews on the narrator. A narrator, I feel like, is going to make or break whether you enjoy an audiobook. If that narrator is not good, you will probably not enjoy the book, even if the book is great. So read reviews when it comes to audiobooks. I have read, how many audiobooks have I done this year? I've done at least four. They were all great, but it took me a while to find books where the review for not only the book was good, but the review for the narrator was good. So if you're gonna go the route of audiobooks, definitely read reviews on the narrator as well. Also invest in some good headphones. I love these headphones that I got, I'm pretty sure I got it the same Christmas as my Kindle. These are Status, I think. Very comfortable. They're, they're basically soundproof. I will even read along on my Kindle while listening to the audiobook, if I have that much free time. Otherwise, I'm just listening to the audiobook. But change up how you consume your books. It doesn't have to just be print. Kindle and your audiobooks count as well. As well as changing up how you consume books, Change up your genres. If you're reading the same genre over and over again, I feel like they're all gonna start to blend together. So like if you're reading romance books, just bam, 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 they all start to kind of blend together after a while. And there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but change it up every so often. And that doesn't mean that you have to go outside of your comfort zone, but just change it up every now and then. So like do a romance, romance, then romanticy. So it's still like in the romance department, but you got a little bit of fantasy in there as well. Like for me instance, I have been doing romance, romanticy, as well as psychological thrillers. Where did those come from? Don't ask me. But they're in there. So change up your genres. Make sure that you're, you're getting a, a little dabble, a little changing it up so it's not the same thing over and over. Not saying that all genres like it's the same thing within all of them, but you get it. Change it up. Send a little bit of spice in there. All right, two more things for you. Set realistic goals for yourself. Now, I set a goal for myself for 52 books in 2024. Considering I haven't read that many combined in the past five years, that may not seem realistic. But according to Goodreads, I am three books ahead of schedule. I have read 10 already this year. Some of those being audiobooks. Set realistic goals for yourself. Don't like come out of your reading slump being like, I'm gonna read 150 books. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll surprise everyone, including yourself, but set realistic goals so that you're not being hard on yourself when the end of the year comes and you haven't met those goals. You know, it's great if you have met those goals, but don't be hard on yourself if you haven't met them. So set realistic goals. And even if you don't meet your goals, do not be hard on yourself. Life happens. And then the final thing is one that I am still struggling with, and that is to not be afraid to DNF a book. Now, if you don't know what DNF means, it means did not finish, do not finish, did not finish, it's did not finish. It basically means that you were reading a book and you were like, I can't finish this. I am done. Don't be afraid to not DNF a book. That is something that I'm still struggling with because I'm sitting there going like, well, I paid money for this. Why would I not get my money's worth and just finish the book? The problem with that mindset is you're going to force yourself through a book that you are not enjoying. And that is how you get back into a reading slump. You're trying to get yourself out of this reading slump, forcing yourself through something that you are not enjoying, you are not vibing with, you are not liking at all, is gonna put you back in a reading slump. Maybe it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if you're like me and you're like, I spent money on this, I wanna get my money's worth, that is perfectly fine. Go back to it another time, maybe better mindset, maybe just a, a different time in your life. There is an Emily Henry book that currently, technically, I guess is a DNF for me. It's Beach Read, which everyone loves. And for some reason I got 42% through and I'm like, I, I don't care about these characters or anything that's happening right now. So technically it is a DNF. However, my goal is to go back and try again now that I'm out of my reading slump officially. So don't be afraid to DNF a book even if it's just for the moment. Or you could find yourself being like, I absolutely hate this book. That's fine. 
that's fine. Even if it's a beloved book that everyone loves so freaking much and you're like, I don't get it. That's fine. We're all gonna have different opinions, okay? Just because yours falls under like the unpopular one doesn't make it any less valid. So don't be afraid to not DNF a book. Don't be afraid to DN don't be afraid to DNF a book. You know what I mean. DNF those books if you're not vibing with them. Again, these are just things that I have found have helped me come out of my five plus year read-in slump. It may not work for everyone, but maybe some of these tips will work for you if you find yourself in a read-in slump or find yourself falling into a read-in slump. Also keep in mind, it's fine to take a break. That should be another tip. It's fine to take a break. If you're feeling burnt out from reading, take a break, don't push yourself. You will find that love again, it may be couple days from now, couple weeks, months, like me, couple years, and that is fine. But if you are in a reading slump or you find yourself getting there, I do sympathize with you. I used to love reading so much and then it just became something that was not my thing anymore. And over the past year and a half or so, I have really missed it and now I'm glad to be back. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever experienced a reading slump, what helped you get out of it or if you're still in one you know finding there's something about finding the right book too delilah green doesn't care is the book that did it for me i absolutely love that book i kind of want to get physical copies of it i have it on kindle kind of want to get physical copies of that little trilogy now i can say that that is like the series that got me out of my reading slump and i cannot thank that author enough just a cutesy little romance so there's gonna be a book out there that brings you back. But like I said, hopefully y'all enjoy some bookish related content because I hope to do more of it. Again, may not be the entire focus of this channel now, but I want to do more. I want to do more bookish related content. I also have a whole bunch of bookshelves now that I need to fill because I recently did a big like declutter of books or book unhaul or something like that. So I gotta fill those books. If you got any book recommendations for me, let me know. Uh, definitely romance, romanticy, some psychological thrillers. That's what I've been really enjoying right now, but I'm really open to most things except for sci-fi is not my thing. Sci-fi is not my thing. So like I steer away from that, but anything else. I'd like to read some good horror within reason. Also mentioned it already. We do have the Fable Book Club. I also have YouTube memberships. So if you are interested in extra content, which might include some bookish related stuff, my YouTube memberships, it is linked below. So check that out for extra content. All of that support does come back into the channel so I can provide better content for you all. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to go down there, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when I upload next. But until next time, bye lovelies. Mm -hmm.